Okay, so this is a, an idea to explain various strange coincidences by saying, actually, there isn't just one universe out there, there's a whole bunch of universes out there, and they all have different laws of physics. And so, for example, in some, some universes, you might end up with laws of physics that basically mean the universe doesn't live for very long at all, and it just snaps into existence and snaps out of existence again. In other universes, it can expand through these processes of cosmic inflation and so on, so we end up with a nice big universe that lives for a long time. And the idea is, if you want to ask the question, you know, why did we end up with a universe which has lived for a nice long time and all those other things, is that, well, actually, there were loads and loads of universes got created, and there's kind of this evolutionary process, this sort of survival of the fittest, that the fittest universe expands and takes up more volume and lives for longer. And so, therefore, the fact we live in a universe like that is because it's just that's, that's the universe that won in this multiverse competition. But actually, yes, you create this whole ensemble of universes, and actually, the reason why we live in one that's so nice is just because, well, that's, you know, because there were so many to choose from, that's the one we were going to end up in. That seems to have nice parallels with things like stars and planets and galaxies. And... It does. Um, my problem with it is that it's completely untestable, as far as I can tell, in that, you know, this idea that, that the sun is just one star, for example, it's a hypothesis. And then you learn more and more about other stars out there by observing them, by making observations of them, and then actually you find, yeah, it's true, actually, the sun's no different from any other star. So that kind of um, principle, uh, cosmological principle that says, you know, we're nothing special, we can test physically. Okay. The multiverse, as far as I can tell, we can't test physically, because the idea that there are other universes out there, well, how do we communicate with them? How do we find out them? How do we observe them? We can only observe, sort of by definition, our own universe. And so at that level, I don't think it's physics. I think it's philosophy is what you're doing there. It's a philosophical way of thinking about things because a physics, for something to be physics, there has to be a testable hypothesis. You have to be able to test whether it's real or not. And, and there's no experiment you can do that will allow you to distinguish between an idea that there are many, many universes out there or that this is the only universe. Maybe, you know, maybe there are very subtle measurements you can make. Maybe there are these in universes in some way interact with each other. If that's the case, then suddenly it becomes physics. It ceases to be philosophy, because then there's maybe a measurement you can make that will determine that there really are there other universes out there. But until someone comes up with that test and actually tries it, it really stays in the realm of philosophy rather than physics. Just because it's not physics, as you just described physics, <laughs> doesn't mean it's not reality. I think you have to, well, you have to be very careful what you mean by reality in that sense. Because again, reality, to me at least, means that it has some testable consequences. You know, something, for something to be real, you have to be able to interact with it in some way. Right? Even, you know, even things as bizarre as neutrinos, right? they don't interact very much with things, and so you could actually say, well, are they really there or not? But actually, once in a while, they'll interact, and so you can say, oh yeah, look, there really is a neutrino. So for something to be real, I think it has to interact with other things, and there has to be some observable consequence of that interaction, so that you can actually say, that's a real thing. Whereas the multiverse, I don't think if there is no interaction between these different elements of the multiverse, then it's, it's not even clear to me that the word real has any meaning to it. But doesn't, isn't that like me saying a person that you never meet in your lifetime, wandering around in China, doesn't exist because you never met them? They don't exist to you, but they still exist. But I could imagine phoning them. I could, you know, there are experiments I could do to confirm their existence. Right? I could phone them up and have a chat. Okay. Whereas in the multiverse, there isn't even an experiment I can think of doing that would allow me to interact. But isn't that just because you're a weak mortal who isn't clever enough to it, think to go there or do the experiment? Like, it doesn't mean it's not there. I, it, yeah. <laughs> I think this is a semantic argument, right? I don't think, I really don't think you can, it's a matter of opinion, right? My, my personal opinion is that that the reality of things requires there to be some test that somebody could do in order to actually show that there is a, you know, that this, the, 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 this thing you've hypothesized actually has some consequences for other things. And unless you can do that, I think it really is not science in that sense. Yeah, I accept, I accept that it's not scientifically provable, yeah. maybe, at the moment. But I, yeah. It's an act, I mean, it's a faith, right? It's a faith based thing, right? It's like God, right? You, by, by sort of by, by construction, you can't prove or disprove the existence of God. And it's the same as this. And the reason why you can't do that is because there is no interaction. And so, yeah, you know, maybe God exists, maybe he or she doesn't.
but it's not something that's open to scientific discussion. It's certainly something which is open to theological and philosophical discussion, and in that sense it's sort of a real thing to discuss, but it's not something that sort of falls within the remit of physics. But to use your own words back at you now, maybe multiverses exist... We just don't exactly, no, but, but it's not, I mean, and, and if we're going to have a philosophical discussion about it, I'm happy to discuss or the, the existence or non-existence of multiverses, just as I'm happy to discuss the existence or non-existence of God. If you want to talk about physics, neither God nor multiverses seem to be open to any sort of sensible discussion as to whether or not they exist within the realms of physics. It sort of removes God, which I'm quite happy to, to push him in as much out of the way I hate the idea of metaphysics coming into physics. Um, so I'm rather attracted to the multiverse scenario because it pushes those two things further apart. This particular piece of Newton's apple tree, and you can see it's genuine because it says IN on it, uh, went up into space. It went on the space shuttle Atlantis and into the International Space Station. And zero 